We left the country because we couldn't afford to live in Australia anymore. I honestly don't know how any Australian is making it work right now in the country. Cost of living increases. Cost of living. Cost of living crisis. You know, the cost of living, high interest rates uh, have affected people quite dramatically. Australians are struggling. Ditching Australia. Housing crisis. Working families hit hardest by price rises and cost of housing. House prices are at record heights across the country. This is a bit shocking, especially if you want to jump into the property market. Take a look at prices for a house in Queensland. That median price is 920. To get something in Sydney, you need the median price is 1.5. So for those in Melbourne, the median price was 942. The group that is most hit is the 29s to 49. Aussies across the country doing it tough. Some of us are doing it tougher than others. Younger Australians are cutting back on necessities, but also the things they want. While those over 65 increased their spending, when we look at older Australians, it's much more likely that they do own their home outright, and that does allow them more flexibility in their spending. But older Aussies aren't all living large. The situation's so bad, a camp of tents and people living in cars has emerged in Anthony Albanese's own Sydney electorate. The lady said that there were people living in tents. Uh, just go down the local public park, she told me, and you'll see all the uh, aged pensioners in tents. You work your whole life for this country, you pay your taxes, you get hit with 140 bucks of an increase in rent, and then you have to go live in a tent in a park. Australia. Australia. This is Australia. It's embarrassing. I think it's They're disgusting. To look after. What is going on? Well, I can already imagine the mixed reactions this thumbnail is going to get. But hey, I guess that's why you're here. So, guys, first of all, thanks for tuning in. And I just wanted to take a little trip off the beaten path and share a conversation that's been weighing heavily on me for quite a while. So today, it's just me and you, no Jan, and just an honest one-on-one -on -one talk. Um, a little bit down memory lane and about some of the personal feelings that I'm experiencing at the moment. So, first of all, I just want to clarify. I love Australia. This land is my birthplace. And despite all my attempts to convince myself otherwise, there's always going to be a deep-rooted connection that I'll always have with this country. I know I've said before that I don't hold any sentiment towards Australia, but if I'm being honest, that's not me lying to you. Rather than me trying to lie to myself. Because the truth is I love my country, or at least I did. But now, now I really hate what it's becoming or what it has become. And it's something I'm struggling with. And that's why I wanna know, does anyone else feel this? Is it just me? And am I the only one who senses this shift, this, this heavy, almost suffocating cloud that's descending on everything we once held dear? And I mean everything. I'm talking about the rising cost of living, the housing crisis, the erosion of our social fabric, and a government that seems more interested in lining its own pockets than in taking care of its people. It's no secret the life in Australia is getting harder especially for hard-working families who are struggling more and more each day to make ends meet. And let's not even start on the woke culture that's infiltrating every aspect of our lives, brainwashing our children in schools, on social media, on TV, and everywhere else you might turn. Now, for those of you who've been with us for a while, you know that the next big chapter of our lives, for Jan and I, is to complete our family by trying to have a baby. So we've been trying and we're having some roadblocks and it's been tough emotionally physically mentally financially in every way possible but we're not giving up because having a child and starting a family is now at the top of our list of priorities and i know that with god's grace we'll get there but see this this is where my conflict lies i'm torn between staying in a country i've always called home or making that move to the philippines every decision every step feels monumental and I want the best for my family as any bloke would and I don't take that responsibility lightly I've never been afraid of failure not until now and and honestly I couldn't care less whatever happens to me I'm no stranger to tough conditions it never bothered me because I never felt that important or I was just too lazy to really care but now now it's different. Now, I have a person, and I'll have people who are going to be depending on me, and the fear of letting them down, of failing the people that I love, is something I've 
never experienced before. And that's the struggle that I'm battling with right now. Do we stay in Australia and face what's happening here or do we take that leap and move to the Philippines? Numbers don't lie. I think it's no exaggeration to say that Australia isn't what it once was. The skyrocketing cost of living is hitting Aussie families harder than ever before and the statistics are damning. If you look at things from stagnating wage growth, the soaring prices of housing, inflation on goods and services and all other aspects that are associated with the cost of living, it's very different to what it was before. Did you know that in the mid to late 70s an average home in Sydney cost $50,000 while the average wage was $10,000 a year? And to top it off, inflation was at around 2 to 3%, meaning general living expenses were cheaper, goods and services were cheaper, and it makes sense how a single income household was able to sustain a family. Today, an average house in Sydney costs 1.4, that's right, 1.4 million dollars, with an average wage of around $85,000 a year. Not to mention an inflation rate sitting at 7.8%. Paints a pretty dim picture, doesn't it? Now, I know there are variables to all these aspects, but on the subject matter as a whole, it is much harder to get by today than it was in the time of Australia's golden era, for lack of a better term. And if that's not enough, every year our politicians seem hell-bent on chipping away at our freedoms with new rules, new laws, and they seem to want to take more from families while enriching corporate entities, not to mention themselves, takes two to tango, um, and we get taxed on everything. Where's my money? You gonna give me my money? Where's my money, man? What we earn, what we spend, what we buy, what we sell, and every year it just seems harder and harder to get ahead. Let me put it into perspective. Now, my dad, my dad on a single income, working as a production line assembler for Kenworth Trucks, he used to build the things, um, he could afford a decent three bedroom home in Vic, feed five mouths, after I came along of course, maintain two cars and still take us out every weekend. Like I don't picture a weekend we didn't go out nearly, you know, and I can still picture him filling up the car like two or three times in that one trip like it was nothing and then coming back from the BP with a kinder surprise for me and chocolates and ice creams and magnums for mum, dad and babcha and my grandma, you know, and I miss those days. And yeah, my dad was a boomer, but Here's the thing, when Jan and I have a baby, there's no way in hell I want to hand our child over to this system to raise, at least not in the first, you know, three to five years. And the point here is, I earn very good money, and I'm not saying this to brag, but to emphasize just how hopeless things have become. Even with an income well above average, when Jan is looking after the little one and we're down to a single income, I know I won't be able to maintain things as they are now, and that's actually embarrassing to say. Like, I've, it, it's a, it feels emasculating, and to put that into perspective, I've got less weighing on me than what my dad had in a similar situation, apples to apples comparison. You know, too few amounts to feed, and we don't even go out on the weekends because money's tight. So what happened to Australia? What happened to this lucky country? It now feels like a place where people, the government, and just the whole social fabric have become so self-absorbed and so self-interested that we've ended up here, in a decaying economy, and with a social construct where the dominant mindset seems to be, oh, that, that's not my problem. What, what's in it for me, you know? As long as it doesn't affect me, who cares? Who cares? Who gives a shit? I call this the fuck you culture. Good morning, my neighbors! Hey, fuck you! Yes! Yes! Fuck you too! I don't think this is just an Australian issue. Um, it's a symptom of the Western world at large. It's this culture of self-preservation at almost any cost. And I'll be honest, I'm guilty of it. I think most of us are, whether we want to admit it or not. Boomers. <laughs> you've lived through different times. You've worked hard. You've built your wealth and you've secured your futures. Now, I'm certainly not here trying to downplay your achievements, nor am I trying to antagonize or blame anybody. So let's get this straight so boomers don't get your panties in a twist. But times were different. And it can be really tough for those of us struggling today to hear, no, oh, you just gotta work harder. Put more hours in, mate, you know? When a lot of us are only sleeping three to four hours a night, taking every bloody overtime shift that's available. And when the reality is, the reality we face is just so much harsher. 
the housing market is out of reach, the cost of living keeps rising, and even for someone like me earning well above average wage, it's a daily struggle for us to maintain the life we've built. You know, I think back to my dad's days. Back then, neighbours didn't lock their doors. You know, kids were playing out in the street, and there just there was a trust, a sense of community, and that's increasingly more difficult to find now. And also today, the dream of owning a home and raising a family feels like a pipe dream for many. You know, we're stuck in a cycle where the rich get richer and the rest of us are just left scrambling just to keep up and to make ends meet. And it's not about the money, it's, it's, it's about just the general loss of compassion and the erosion of the community. We've become so focused on our own success that we've forgotten what it means to care for each other. This isn't the Australia I grew up in. You know, I remember where neighbours looked out for one another, where there was honour and dignity in helping those around you. Now it feels like everyone's out for themselves, driven by this f you attitude that says, oh, as long as it doesn't affect me, who cares? Not my, pro not my problem, it's not my job, it's not my problem. And this mindset has seeped into every aspect of our lives and we're more divided than ever, more isolated, and it seems like the very things that once made us strong are rapidly disappearing. Now, I'm not here pointing fingers, I'm just as much a part of this society as anyone else, and I've benefited from it too, but I just can't help feeling that we're losing something vital here, something that made this country great, and we're all in this together, yet it feels like we're all against each other, and it genuinely makes me fear for what that means for our future, for our kids' future. Australia, this vast, sunburnt land of endless horizons and unimaginable wealth. A country rich in mineral resources with sprawling landscapes that stretch far beyond the eye can see. A land where the possibilities seem infinite and yet, here we stand at a crossroads, questioning what the future holds for us and our children. With just 27 million people scattered across this immense island continent, it's almost unfathomable that we should struggle as we do. But struggle we do. Not just in material terms, but in something far deeper, down to the very core. For what is a country if not the collective spirit of its people? Their hopes, their dreams, and love for one another. And this is where my conflict lies. I love Australia. My birthplace, my home. The soil that nurtured me, but how? How do I reconcile that love with the profound disappointment I feel when I look around and see what we've become? A country so rich in resources, yet so impoverished in its sense of community and compassion. A land where the pursuit of wealth has become the ultimate goal, often at the expense of the very things that truly matter. You see, when I think about raising a child here, I'm filled with dread. The thought of sending them to schools where their minds might be warped by toxic influences, where the focus is more on the material rather than on nurturing the human spirit, it's enough to break any parent's heart. And yes, I could send them to a private school, but that's assuming I can afford it, that most people can afford it. And how can I justify pouring my hard-earned money into a system that I no longer trust? <laughs> it's ironic, isn't it? The Philippines. A country often seen as poor and underdeveloped offers something Australia seems to be losing. A sense of love, happiness, a genuine human connection. In the Philippines, life is simple, but it's rich in the things that truly matter. People aren't consumed by the relentless pursuit of more. Instead, they find joy in what they have, in the love they share, in the bonds that tie them together. So that's why I find myself torn between two worlds. On one hand, there's Australia, the land of my birth, a country with incredible potential, but one that seems to be losing its way. On the other, there's the Philippines, a place where I've found a deeper sense of peace, of purpose and of community. A place where I can imagine raising a child not just to survive, but to truly thrive. And this is where I turn to you. What do you think? Is moving to the Philippines really such a bad idea? How would you want to raise your children? 
What kind of future do you envision for them? How can we, in good conscience, continue to support a system that we know in our hearts is failing us? I don't have all the answers, but I do know this. I want the best for my family. I know many of you feel the same way. We're all struggling with the same questions, the same doubts, the same fears. But maybe by coming together, by watching content like this, by sharing our stories and our struggles, we can find a way forward. A way to reclaim the Australia we once knew and loved. Or perhaps to find a new home where we can build the future that we've always dreamed of for ourselves and for our children. Thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe.